You know I had to come out with another video today. How could I not when we're in the middle of training camp? It's a lot of work, but of course, I love doing it. If you missed my video from earlier today, it was our weekly Bulls hot takes video. I'll leave a link in the description and on the end screen of this video in case you missed it. And of course, you can leave your hot takes in the comments of this one below to be included in next week's. But anyway, day two of training camp has concluded. And of course, now that we're seeing more videos and images from the practices and the guys are looking happy and working hard, getting ready for the season, the preseason being just six days away is crazy that it's already here. And so in this video, I'll be recapping day two of camp and some key highlights, takeaways from the day. So what's going on, everyone? You were listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Day two of training camp has concluded and we head into the final days of camp and into the regular season. We get more and more glimpses of this new look Bulls team and how they're working together. Now, yesterday we received updates on Patrick Williams and Kobe White and how their rehab is progressing. We did get a chance to hear a bit from Kobe again. You know, I mentioned in yesterday's video that Kobe did indicate that he really has been virtually able to do everything on the basketball court except for over the head shots. The team also did confirm as of today that he's been in the film and weight room while rehabbing quite a bit, which is great, especially as it relates to him watching lots of film. You know, for someone like Kobe, who is a very hard worker, very talented athletically, I would love to see him improve that cerebral side of basketball and really get into all the ins and outs of the game and ramp up his b-ball IQ. Now, as of right now, the expectation is that Kobe will return to the lineup in mid-November, which would mean he would miss roughly the first month of the season. Now, obviously, whenever Kobe does return, his role is going to be different than it was last season. And for most players, you know, they may not take that so well. Being a starter and one of the lead scorers on a team to now coming off the bench in a more limited role. But for Kobe, he's actually, at least based on what he said anyway, is handling it very well. He spoke very highly of Lonzo Ball, saying that, you know, Lonzo is really going to help this team in a major way, being a major piece, and that he's great defensively and even joked, which Kobe then added that he could learn a lot from. He then went on to say, when asked about the new additions and how that will impact his future, he did say, quote, uh, life ain't perfect, bro. You got to work for stuff. Like I always say, since I got here from day one, I'm just going to compete and find my role. And whatever that role may be, I'm going to play it to its fullest. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed by Kobe and his level of self-awareness here. Like he knows he's not a good defender. And instead of seeing Lonzo as competition, he's going to take this as an opportunity to learn from him. And rather than him being upset and coming off the bench, uh, you know, he takes it in stride and says he's going to compete and find his role and play it to its fullest. Like, you can't ask for more from a young kid who is still developing his game and can still be that key piece for the Bulls coming off the bench. So I love Kobe's mindset going into the season despite the injury setback and, of course, losing his starting spot with the Bulls bringing in Lonzo. In other news and kind of random, but Terry Stotts was at the Bulls practice facility today. Uh, Stotts is the former Blazer head coach who was let go this last offseason. Not really sure why he's there. Uh, maybe he could just be joining the coaching staff in some capacity at a later time. Um, it also is said that it's pretty common for coaches to invite others to a practice facility and the coaching fraternity, as they like to call it. So we don't really know what that's about, but it's interesting, I guess. Uh, as for the practice, I mean, really more of the same stuff you would expect in training camp, getting guys in shape, running heavy drills, getting up shots, scrimmaging, running plays, all of it. It's funny because it was said that the Bulls were able to have one practice, one after the trade deadline for all the new acquisitions to get used to the new system. And Daniel Tice, who was one of the guys traded to the Bulls, wasn't able to participate in that lone practice. So to see guys like Vucevic, Troy Brown Jr., Javante Green, these were the players who were traded to the Bulls at the deadline, finally start to get some run in a practice setting in Billy Donovan's system and working with the rest of the team even after having already been with the Bulls for a long time is really great to see. And I don't know, maybe I'm just suffering from recency bias, but I don't remember seeing guys this happy and all smiles at training camp like we have seen in the past years. Only limited footage of practices have been shared thus far, but in what we have seen, guys are laughing, giving each other high fives, chest pumps. I mean, these guys are excited and ready to go. And you know that Zach Levine has got to be excited and this being really the biggest opportunity for him to showcase what he can do now that he actually has strong talent around him 
for the first time in his career. Anyway, guys, that was kind of it. I'll be honest, so far training camp has been kind of quiet, at least in terms of what they have been reporting and showing to the public. But obviously, I'm sure there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, but compared to last year's training camp where they would air multiple player interviews via Zoom a day, you really just haven't seen much of that this time around. I'll be out with another video tomorrow for day three, and I'll actually have a special guest joining for me, so stay tuned for that and make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on so you don't miss a video as always. Appreciate you all for tuning in and I will catch you guys in the next one.